In a previous video, we showed you a whole selection of succulent crests, amazing and interesting plants. We've had a few requests on how to propagate succulent crests. Well, there are two methods, one from stem cuttings, one from leaf cuttings. In this video, James Lucas from Succulents Australia is going to show you how he propagates succulent crests from stem cuttings. And John, I promised you I was going to show you what we do with some of the um, crests that we handle. This is the monster sunburst crest. And you see it gets really big and really heavy. Ultimately, they break, fall apart, and fall over, you know, when they get really big. This is one plant, by the way. Like, you know, four parts, five parts, actually. All right, that's not a very strong bit. But what I'll do, I'll show you here how we like to handle them. One pair of secateurs. We'll go through, we'll just cut these ones off here. Now, I like small wounds, which is just one cut at the bottom. We can let these dry for two or three weeks before we plant them. That's, that's not such good material. This one here, you can see it's like really wide, several small heads, a bit weak. I prefer more a single piece. And we'll do this one here. That's about it. Now this one here, easier to do. Yeah, cut there, here. Well, probably do two out of that one, here. This is a bit weak, this material. I don't like that sort of material very much. That's what we're coming into here now. We'll get a few out of there, but you can sort of see rot is setting in down below. So if we cut that up high, keep the secateurs away from it, so we don't transfer it. And we, then we're gonna let this dry out really far, hard before we plant in a couple of weeks time. So out of a really big head like that, we're gonna end up with a uh, hundred or so cuttings. Then we'll show you a couple other ones while we've got them here. This is Liesl. You can see we've actually grown this tray, we've kept it aside so we can get some more plants. And this is a good one here. What we'll do is the best way to handle these is bare root them. Clean a few of the dead leaves off. Get yourself a empty tray. And we start trimming. So we'll go here. That's a crest, definitely. Now leave that as is. Too small, you can go harder but I prefer not to. At this stage, we have plenty of mother material here. Here. Find out where the cut is. Yeah, gap is in here, so we'll cut into here. You want the smallest wound possible to go into the ground. And I'm gonna leave that one as is. Oh, I might get one more off here. There you go, like that. Now, one of these ones, this is a lot easier. I think this is subsessless. Again, there'll be nothing much left of this plant, so we might as well just destroy it. And that's what doing the crest is all about. Now you can also use your knife. Okay, we're gonna look at this carefully because we're gonna dissect it really. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That we will cut into here. Now this is the bits I don't like so much. We'll cut through here. Now you can do a crest this way. You can either snap them like that, but what happens, you end up with a long wound here, and that can be a bit dangerous from the point of view of getting fungal material in there. So this is not such a good one to do. So you'll cut here, here. Careful not to cut yourself. Now that could be cut in half again, but I think it's going too far. This one can definitely be cut there. You can do it like that. Trim it, clean wound. And these will work, but higher casualty rate on the ones with the long downward cuts. And I reckon that's too wide. It's actually already got roots ready to go. But, but if you dry this out well, they'll work fine. Let's show you another one. Now this is the miniature Argavoides corduroy crest. 
and you see it's gone near the soil in its neighbour's pot, actually got roots there ready to go. Now again, I actually like working with knives actually. One, smallest wound possible I think. Now I think we should get two out of here. Hmm. Yep, I'll take you off over here. Right. Clean the dead leaves off. If you really want to get a lot, you go here. In behind, here, get two. Yeah, we'll get one here. So you'd be leaving these to callus over for how long? A week? Two uh, weeks? Oh, about two weeks. I like to do a little bit. And in fact, I've actually left these, I've done them in winter before. Spring is the best time of year, but I have done them in winter before. And I'll leave them for four or five weeks until they actually develop roots, trying to look to grow. And then you know that they're well calloused. You can sort of see this one's branched really readily. Oh, one normal head. So I added this one, you're going to find we're going to end up with about 25 plants. So it's not really that prolific. See, that's just one piece really. So we've got to cut off all the little shoots first, then we decide what's left. So how old would this plant have been? I'd say he'd be four years old, because this is the miniature, so he really is a small one. And clean those daggy bits off here. This has been sitting around for a few years, eh, too, this one. Again, you can do it by hand, by breaking them. Now you can see the rot has started a bit here, gone a bit soft. So it's actually a good idea to remove that material, let it dry out, and that rot can then disappear. See how it's tight in there? No air movement. That's actually where a bit of rot started. There, clean them up. Okay. Clean out all the dead leaves so they've got a really good opportunity to root well. And you do this to the old one. See, you don't really need that old big chunk of root there. I actually think you're better off to start fresh like that. This is another one, old one, that really could do with a trim up. Like It's getting a bit old, tired, a bit weak. So it's often better to cut these up and give them a new lease of life. This one's Debbie Crest, and it really has miniaturised. Look how many heads are in there. Mm, break it up to a manageable size. Yeah, this will grow back to normal Debbies. Let's have a look at these. See, see the big wide fan there? It's about here, I think, a pair of secateurs. That's a wide fan, this one, so I think down there, that'll still work. That's a bit rough, you can see a bit of rot starting there. Maybe we've got to take that off on the side here. That's a bit weak, this growth. That's the sort of growth I don't really like. It's a little bit too weak. I prefer this sort of growth here. It's a bit more solid. And we might actually take this off on the side there, because there's a bit of a gap down there. Uh, this one's got several heads. And take him off there, take this one off there. So you can see you're going to get 30 or 40 plants off this plant if you give it a bit of time. Now you'll plant these, you'll find a few will die, but most will make it. So this, when you're planting these, you're using a pretty free draining potting mix? This a normal potting mix which is very free draining and if anything for the private person at home, I'd use it very well, added a bit of extra gravel to it to make it even better. But I'll show you next how we do these and then I'm going to show you a little bit about leaf cutting. All we do, move over here. Let's say this is just dried out for a couple of weeks. We make a little groove in here and just tuck the heads in. And we just do it like that. And would you water them? Not straight away. I'm inclined to let her uh, sit here for about a week or 10 days, and then new pink roots will start to come out once they're in the soil, then I'll water them. So 
two weeks drying and almost two weeks. That's right, yeah. in about a month. And, and th th these will handle that dry period for a long time. It will shrivel, it will lose a few leaves, but it's the best way to do it. And we'll be back with a separate video on propagating succulent crests by leaf propagation. We've got more videos coming up on rare succulents, including echeverias and crassulas. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for regular updates on a whole range of succulents and a whole range of garden plants. And as always, good luck with your gardening and don't forget to ring the bell so that we notify you.